Longer 17799. It will be called 27002. Okay, please remember this. Okay, so 27001 is the former BS 7799 part 2, and the 27002 is the 17799. And um, each of these standards that's being developed right now in the ISO standards are being used to help you to implement ISMS control in details. So today, if let's say the CIO asks you, okay, I want you to implement all the entire controls in place. Then you have you read through the section or let's say for example communications and operations management and say ah you must have this in place you must have that in place yeah i need all this in place but how how do i do that okay so this control says you must secure your network but how do you secure your network okay so you can use 18028 part 2 which is really the security framework architecture okay to design or to review through your network and see how you can con how you can control them better for those people who are interested, 18028 part 1 is in the area of security management. Okay, how do you manage your network security? Part 3 is involved in VPN, part 4 is remote access server, and part 5 is in... Eh, sorry, part 3 is in firewall, part 4 is v, uh, RAS, part 5 is VPN. Okay, so we belong to what we call the 18028 family, the Network Security Standard Series. Okay, any questions so far? I have 14 minutes. Okay, let's make it quick. Now, how does the industry benefits? This standard can be used by four different kinds of people. First, end user. Okay, people like CIO can use this framework to see where are the essential areas of network to secure. Just like I showed you in the previous four examples. The consultant can use it as a baseline to design a secure network based on best practice because this standard is now officially adopted both at IQT and the ISO level. So it is uh, useful for consulting. It's also useful for auditor to review the security design of the network by first taking a very big network and breaking them into nine different components. And then you apply your audit perspective accordingly to each of these components. And lastly, vendor. This is very, very important. The vendor can use this to leverage actual customers. That when I sell you this product, okay, when I sell this security product or this network product or whatsoever product, it fits into one of the modules. Okay, so today most customers are really worried when they buy a product from a vendor. Okay, the vendor doesn't know much about network security. They sell the network security product in the default configuration which is not secure and does not uh, and compromise a few things like data communication, privacy and stuff like that. So once the vendor understands all these things, okay, they could design and configure the system to to comply to this network security standard requirements. And then, you know, the customer can be assured that, yeah, you know, these guys know their stuff and if, if they plug in this product into their network, it does not jeopardize their environment. Okay. Um, this is really the last slide. Um, I want to say that it has been officially adopted in, in as an ISO standard on actually this year, 1st of February. There are more SDOT AO5 standards going to be produced. Okay. One is the network security certification. Uh, Bell Labs is currently doing a security certification program right now. And uh, we are also doing a division of this uh, uh, network and uh, the security features between the network, enterprise network environment and the user network environment, which is to be known as X.AO5+. I'm not sure about this yet because um, I heard this about this uh, standard when I was in Jeju Island this year in April. Um, there were some talks about because the controls that you see earlier on is really for commercial purpose. How about for end user environment, which again warrants a totally different kind of controls. Okay, so that's called XDO AO5+. Plus. Um, we have actually done a PCI mapping. Okay, for those people who are not familiar, this PCI mapping is really the payment card industry by Visa and Mastercard. Okay, we have successfully mapped the P PCI mapping to 18028 part 2, which means that if a cu customer as a merchant who wants to know how secure is your network, okay, based on the PCI requirements, we can map it back to 18028 part 2 to tell them that how secure their network is. Okay. And uh, we will roll out the certification in the near future. Okay, so that really concludes much about the introduction of X05. And um, um, this is really my end of slide. Um, I understand I've got 11 minutes for questions. Uh, before I put up for questions, I just want to summarize my presentation. Is that today I urge all of you to take note one thing. Networks are very dynamic. Okay? The network itself, I call it, is really the identity of the organization. What the organization is, is really what the net network is all about. And um, 
because every organization is different. Every network is different. Okay, and not only networks are different in each organization. The person who administers the network determines and shapes how the network functions. And really because of that, networks are very dynamic and you have to use a kind of standard that really can accommodate, accommodate to different kind of operating environments. Um, just, just as a closing note, okay, um, Lucent actually did a study of the security of wireless networks using this 18028, which actually came up with a, a determination that uh, WEP and WPA and WPA2, okay, which is really more secure based on these things. And our consultants actually use this to really confirm and prove that WPA2 is really more secure than WPA. Now, people say that WPA2 is more secure than WPA. Now, that is, a, that is what everybody says. Prove it. Okay, so we actually use this standard to prove to people by ma mapping out the controls and objectives and show that because of all the compliance and the non-compliance issue, WPA2 is more compliant than WPA. Okay, so really um, it can be applied to a lot of other kinds of networks. Okay, so uh, in conclusion, I thank you for your time, really for your interest in this thing. If you have any questions, uh, I have actually 10 more minutes to answer your questions. Or uh, I'm actually, Lucent actually has a booth outside, so you can actually catch me uh, during the break time or some other time. I'll be here today and tomorrow. Okay, so any question? Yes. Sorry. So your, your basic axioms are that uh, the network is broken into three levels. Yes. And each level has... That's three different kind of activities. Okay. And three different... And each level has what, eight attacks? It has uh, eight security dimensions which you need to consider to security that particular plane and for that layer. The activity for that particular layer. Okay. Okay. So that's what it really means all about. Okay. So what I'm trying to say is that because you look at this example again, let's 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 look through all the all the point again. Okay. Really what you see here is this. Okay. Depending on your operating environment, you just focus really on the relevant activities that what your business is all about. Okay, it really want, I want, really want to show to you is that you have, you have only so much limited resources and dynamic networks are different from each people. Really look at the correct place before you apply the correct control. That's what this standard is really all about. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, any other questions? Okay, I honestly, I don't expect, I didn't really expect too much questions on this because let me explain why. This is still a... Uh, the framework, okay? The application, I can honestly tell you, is going to be very interesting, meaning that it's going to be, it can be pretty complex, okay? If for those people who have played with BSS99 certification, you know how complex is BSS99. This can be as equally complex as BSS99 uh, 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 certification. So, so uh, but really, at the end of the day, is you can use this as a guide, okay? Today, you can actually uh, purchase this standard, download it, look at it, and you can use it as a guide to think about how your network is really designed by breaking down into different groups and then you can actually think about it. Did I do enough to protect this? Did I do enough to protect this? If I am in a bank, did I do enough at the application layer? If I am a service provider, did I do enough to protect my infrastructure? So on and so forth. So it really makes you put your thinking in the right place, okay, and with, 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 with that limited resource, okay? Uh, yes, any other questions? No other questions? Okay, no problem. Uh, I, I believe maybe you all will talk about, about this. Maybe it's, it's quite hard to, really, it's very hard to digest, honestly. So, <laughs> so um, if you have time, we can really chat after, after this presentation, okay? Thank okay. you, Mr. Chief Dimeng. As he has said, he, Lucent has the booth outside, so if you have any queries or would like to discuss anything, you can feel free to see him outside. He'll be here with, joining us for two days, right, Mr. Chief? Yes? Excellent. We would now like to introduce our next speaker. He's going to be setting up his laptop for his